Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about a backlit mode for the Game Boy Advance SP. Now you might think it's unnecessary because the SP already has a backlit screen, known as the AGS-101, but this backlit mode has some unique features, which I think is still worth checking out. So here is the mod kit. I bought it from Funny Playing with my own money. It was shipped in a small case which did a good job protecting the screen. Here we have a foam pad which I'll come back in a bit. And here is the screen. It's an IPS panel with full viewing angle. It's also a fully laminated display with the screen lines attached. And finally, a ribbon cable and shortware. Here I have the AGS-001 front light model. I bought it at a really low price as the front light is not working. And that, I think, makes it perfect for this mod. Now let's open the console. You need both Trailwing and Phillips screwdrivers. It's pretty easy overall. Just be careful about this ribbon cable. And there's a screw hidden under the ribbon cable, so don't miss it. Here comes the most annoying thing in the modding scene, the hinge. I used a small screwdriver to push it out, and I had a heart attack every time I did this, so please let me know in the comment section if there are better ways. Anyway, the rest is pretty straightforward. Just remove the buttons, the rubber pads, and take out the original screen. At this point, I would suggest to test the new IPS screen first. Connect the screen to the ribbon cable, flip it over, and connect the other side to the PCB. Power on the console, and as you can see, it works out of the box. In other words, the soldering part is optional. But without soldering, the brightness control won't work. Now let's put in the new screen. It actually fits perfectly without any spacers. However, when closing the two halves together, you can see it doesn't close up. So you need to trim down this side. Here I use the Dremel rotary tool, but you can use whatever works best for you. Now put in the screen, roll the ribbon cable, and close the two halves. Here I forgot to add the foam pad, and you will see how it turned out later in this video. And here comes the soldering part. One side goes to the soldering point on the ribbon cable, and the other side goes to where it says Q12B. And that's it. Just put everything back together, and then you are good to go. As you can see, there's a gap on the side of the screen because I didn't use that foam pad. So make sure you use it and don't make the same mistake that I made. Anyway, back to the screen. It has five different levels of brightness, which can be adjusted by the brightness button. It has a resolution of 480 by 320, which is integer scaling. So it has a proper 3 by 2 aspect ratio. As mentioned earlier, the screen is an IPS panel and it has full viewing angle. It's also the same screen used for Game Boy Advance from Funny Playing. Their Game Boy Advance mod kit has a screen tearing issue for the first batch, and they fixed it in the later revision. Here I'm glad to say that the SP mod does not have screen tearing at all. The color is really sharp and vivid, and the screen can be really bright at the highest level. Of course, this video won't be complete if I don't compare this with the original AGS-101, so here you go. You can see the IPS screen is slightly bigger than the stock AGS-101 screen, so it has smaller bezels. And here both units are at their brightest level, and you can see the IPS screen is brighter than the AGS-101. It also seems slightly warmer than the AGS-101. Another difference is, the IPS panel has 4 times the resolution of the AGS-101, so it has higher pixel density. It might not show well on cameras, but basically the stock AGS-101 screen has a more retro-style pixelated image, whereas the IPS panel looks more like an emulator running on a smartphone. I think it's a matter of preference, so I will leave it to you to decide. And finally, I found there's light coming through the edges of the original AGS-101 screen when you look at it at an angle. But this IPS panel doesn't have this issue because it's a fully laminated display. 
Overall, I think this is a solid mod. It uses a modern IPS panel with full viewing angle. It's also a fully laminated display, which not only saves you some money on the screenless, but also gives you a dust-free screen. It does, however, cost more power than the AGS-101, so battery life is not as good. But the SP uses a rechargeable battery, so the power consumption may not be as important. And finally, the mod kit costs about $40 to $50, depends on where you get it. And that is usually cheaper than an AGS-101 in general. It works for both AGS-101 and AGS-001 motherboards. So obviously, I would recommend to do this on the cheaper frontline model, which are readily available. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Goodbye, 再见!